On the 5th of July 2022, at 6.21 in the morning, an average summer morning in the city of Doncaster would quickly turn, with a large-scale derailment just around the corner. Around 10 hours earlier, at 9 minutes past 8 on the 4th of July, a train driver employed by GB Rail Freight, referred to here on as GBRF, signed on to work for their fifth consecutive shift. After a period of driving a different train, the driver had a three-hour wait at Peterborough while he waited for a second train. Involved in the incident, 4 Echo 11. 4 Echo 11 was the head code for the freight service for the day, operated by a Class 66 locomotive, 66729, dragging around half a mile of cargo. The driver was set to operate the service from Peterborough to Doncaster Decoy North Junction, where another driver would then take the service over. However, the train would never show up for the relief driver at Doncaster. The driver entered his information onto the on-train data recorder, OTDR, at 0459 hours, and departed a minute later at 0500 hours, 46 minutes early. It should be noted that the driver did not perform the running brake test required by GBRF operation rules. He was expected to arrive at Doncaster Decoy North Junction at 0717, However, his early departure meant that he would most likely end up being stuck behind another train at some point. After departure from Peterborough, the driver took 4 Echo 11 up the East Coast Main Line. While completing their journey, it should be noted that the OTDR once again noticed a violation with the train reaching speeds that exceeded the limit for the high cube containers which the train was hauling. The driver only encountered proceed green aspects up until encountering the flashing yellow sequence on approach to Lubbersall car junction at around 0617, which indicated a divergence onto the down slow line. At the same time, train 4 Echo 82, a freight service operated by the Genesee and Wyoming Grand Freightliner Group, was standing at signal Delta 207, as the train was running early and the relief for the service had not yet arrived at Doncaster Decoy Yard, so it was being held. This service was also operated by a Class 66 locomotive, with around half a mile of cargo. The signal protecting 4 Echo 82 was signal Delta 197, which was the signal beyond the signal controlling Lovasar Car Junction, Delta 191, which was showing a single yellow alongside an illuminated junction indicator for the down slow. Returning back to 4 Echo 11, the driver, who was expecting to be routed onto the down slow, saw the flashing double yellow aspect from signal Delta 187 like normal, and the flashing single yellow aspect from signal Delta 189. During this time, the driver moved the power handle to the off position, allowing the train to coast at around 68 miles per hour, and made an initial brake application. Soon after, the driver approached signal Delta 191, displaying a single steady yellow aspect, and a junction route indicator for the down slow. This meant that the next signal, Delta 197, was at danger. The driver made several train brake applications, but nowhere near enough to stop. On approach to Delta 197, at danger, the driver was travelling at around 54 miles per hour as it passed over the AWS ramp. The AWS warning itself was acknowledged very rapidly, and upon the site of Delta 197, the driver made a full service brake application, but this was insufficient. The train passed signal Delta 197 at danger, travelling around 48 miles per hour. Four seconds after the signal was passed at danger, the driver pressed the emergency brake plunger upon seeing the flashing tail light of 4 Echo 82, but it was too late. At 6.21 in the morning, 4 Echo 11 collided with the rear containers of 4 Echo 92 at around 28 miles per hour. The locomotive operating 4 Echo 11, 66729, derailed instantly alongside multiple crates from both 4 Echo 11 and 4 Echo 92. The now very shaken driver of 4 Echo 11 initiated a railway emergency call on the GSMR, notifying the signal of the collision. The driver of 4 Echo 92 walked down to 4 Echo 11's locomotive, 66729, and helped the driver of 4 Echo 11 out of the train as the cab door was jammed due to the damage sustained. Both drivers were not injured. The two drivers then walked to the end of the train to see if it was foul of the busy East Coast Main Line. It was not. 
The driver of 4 Echo 11 was tested for the presence of non-medical drugs or alcohol and passed both tests. The driver was sent to hospital as a precaution and released later that day. The line was closed for 26 days for recovery and infrastructure repair and reopened on the 31st of July 2022. 66739 was repaired and is back into service to my knowledge. Now you must ask, what caused a train driver to approach a signal at danger at 54 miles per hour? Well, first we can consider the issue of fatigue, low workload and expectations. It's noted that the cause of the SPAD was down to the driver losing awareness of the driving task. While he was still conscious and awake and responsive, such as responding to the AWS and DSD warnings, he was inattentive to the driving task. The driver only experienced green aspects up until the flashing double yellow sequence at Delta 187, therefore had a very low workload and little to no stimulus. In addition, the driver couldn't recall ever being stopped at Delta 197 in the past. In fact, it was so uncommon that GBRF couldn't identify any OTDR recordings where one of their trains was stopped at Delta 197. The flashing yellow sequence was very common to the driver. The fact that they'd taken the route so commonly and the fact that they'd never been stopped at Delta 197 meant that when their awareness lapped, they didn't consider the fact that Delta 197 could be at danger. It's likely that they lost awareness after passing Delta 191, showing a single yellow aspect. Fatigue was also a large problem considered by the RAIB, with the shift being the driver's sixth consecutive shift, working the 29th and the 30th of June, and then the 1st to the 4th of July. Within five days, the driver had worked 59 hours and 43 minutes. It's noted that the risk, risk assessments taken by GBRF did not identify hazards caused by train drivers being fatigued, and GBRF management systems didn't detect the fact that the driver was at risk of being fatigued. The 4th to the 5th of July shift, the day of the incident, was not only the longest shift they had worked that week, but was also the first rostered night shift, with the others being day shifts. It's also noted that the 5th and the 6th shifts the driver worked were worked on rest days. Some fatigue measures noted by the RAIB were, it was the driver's first night shift, it was a long night shift, the shift was two hours or more longer than the previous shift they had worked, and they had worked more than 55 hours in a seven day period. Finally, the engineered safety systems did not mitigate the loss of driver awareness. There are three points of protection on the unit. The driver's safety device, or DSD, a foot pedal that must be released and pressed down within 3 seconds every 90 seconds on average. The second system is the automatic warning system or AWS, sending an audible alarm when approaching signals displaying double yellow, yellow or danger or when approaching speed restriction warning boards. With failure to cancel the alarm initiating an emergency stop, the OTDR data observes each AWS warning leading up to the SPAD and the time taken to respond. Delta 187 at 0 0.3 seconds. Delta 189 at 1.2 seconds. Delta 191 at 1.1 seconds. And Delta 197 at 0 0.5 seconds. The final system was Train Protection and Warning System, or TPWS, a magnetic system fitted to most signals to stop a train if it passes at danger, or fitted to track sections measuring speed to stop trains approaching danger signals too quickly, or track sections too fast. While all these safety systems are good and effective, they only work if a driver fully loses consciousness or awareness. However, the driver adequately responded to all AWS and DSD alerts. And, in addition, Delta 197 was not fitted with TPWS, therefore there was no brake intervention. That being said, TPWS intervention would have not stopped the collision unless overspeed sensors were fitted. Even then, it may not have been stopped in time. It's likely that a combination of all these factors resulted in the collision. The RAIB made several recommendations following the incident. First, GBRF should review all of its policies and processes for fatigue management, including investigating how and why certain aspects of fatigue arises. The RSSB, the Rail Safety Standard Board, were also advised to review current medical fitness standards for safety critical staff and should be able to identify sleep disorders. Drivers are reminded that flashing yellow signal aspects indicate that there is a diverging route with a lower speed. 
It is important that drivers carefully check the junction signal on approach to identify whether it is indicating that the relevant signal beyond the junction is showing a red aspect. Not doing so increases the risk of a signal pass to danger and collision at locations where drivers can become accustomed to the route being cleared beyond a junction, particularly where flashing yellow aspects have been displayed. Overall, while this train incident caused no injuries or fatalities, it's a harsh reminder that fatigue when operating a vehicle, not just a train, could have devastating effects, especially if this incident were to hypothetically involve two passenger trains. The recommendations have been taken into consideration, and to my knowledge, an incident involving a train collision of this nature has not occurred since. We can all hope that this is the last we hear of an incident like this.